this is the last session of our WordCamp Sydney. So I'm pretty sure you might be exhausted, but I'm pretty enjoying um, the yesterday and today. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk about um, the deploying the WordPress into Azure in six different ways. So um, yeah, my name is Justin from um, the Maxia as a senior consultant, and I'm, I am uh, double awarded Microsoft MVP. And these are all my um, the social media profile. So if, if you like, you can follow me on, on Twitter or the WordPress or LinkedIn. So before starting, I'd like to ask a few questions. So how, uh, yeah, so where do you deploy your WordPress website for your personal purpose or um, the work purpose? So anyone using the web hosting company like um, the GoDaddy or HostGator or Bluehost? Okay. Um, what about um, the, the web server on-prem behind, which is behind the firewall for your corporate use? Okay. Um, what about the public cloud, such as AWS, okay, um, the Google, or Azure? No one, no one. I knew it. <laughs> so Azure is not that popular. Um, how interesting. Um, the throughout this session, uh, but I'm, I'm going to use uh, Azure public cloud to host um, the WordPress um, website onto Azure and in the, on the cloud. So there are uh, more than 50 uh, the locations from all around the world to um, host um, the web applications, including WordPress. And these are the four regions in Australia. So one in Sydney, one in Melbourne, and the other two is in Canberra. So based on or depending on your business requirement, we can um, deploy our WordPress website anywhere in the world, including Australia. So. Um, there are actually many different ways um, deploying WordPress into Azure Cloud, but um, these six ways are most um, distinctive ways. So yeah, we can uh, cover this up. Now, um, before starting, I'd like to um, see um, the look, um, the review um, these diagrams. First of all, the way of deployment. Um, we can use a virtual machine. So we can use a virtual machine to deploy um, the WordPress applications. But in order to uh, use virtual machines, we need to deploy a virtual machine image, we need to deploy um, the network, we need to deploy IP address, etc., cetera, et cetera, right? So these kind of things are all done um, by ourselves. And this is actually not about application itself. This is all about um, the infrastructure side, right? So this is often called as um, infrastructure as a service or IaaS, right? So if we use this approach, then um, we have all the control on us, but it's less convenient. So think about this container um, approach. So we can call it as a container, as a service, or CAS. Um, then we don't have to worry about the server maintenance, right? So public cloud, um, the cloud service uh, provider offers a server environment. On top of that, we are just using containers to host our applications, including WordPress. Right? In this case, we don't have to worry about the server maintenance, which is more convenient than before. Now, this is my favorite part, actually. And this is um, the PaaS, stand for Platform as a Service. Right? And in this case, we don't have to actually worry about any server maintenance. We don't have to worry about scaling. We don't have to worry about the version upgrading or security issues, whatever, right? Because cloud service provider has all um, the maintenance issue. All, they do all the dirty jobs. We only focus on the code itself. So we only focus on business, our business logic, business operation, and WordPress code itself, right? So using pass, the downside of that, we, we don't have any control on that. But the, the more convenient. So that's the different side of um, the IaaS and PaaS. So think about this. Also, um, there is another approach. I can, I can call it um, a hybrid approach, but um, it actually takes benefits from CAS and PaaS. So we will discuss it later. Now, 
Um, think about the virtual machine approach, which is um, referred as IaaS. So in, in order to use um, the virtual machine, we need to have um, the virtual machine image. So uh, Microsoft provides a um, predefined uh, virtual machine image, which can be um, the Windows or Linux. Or even in Linux, we, um, we can choose um, the Ubuntu or SUSE or CentOS, whatever. Right? Or even um, they have a predefined WordPress image on top of running the Linux box. Right? So we can simply use um, the WordPress image to deploy a virtual machine on that. So let's have a look at this video. Um, so I'm going to create uh, a virtual machine. So, but uh, as I said, uh, there is a, the WordPress pre-installed virtual machine image. So we can uh, choose, uh, simply choose a WordPress uh, 4.9.7 and create uh, the virtual machine. And we give it a name of uh, the virtual machine like this. Now, um, because um, this is a server, so we need to um, provide um, the server username, admin username, like this. And it, we can choose either SSH key or password uh, to um, access to the server. So and in this demo, we just simply use a um, password approach. But if you prefer using um, SSH key, and then we can use that. Now, um, yeah, we, use, um, we choose the um, resource group and the location, like this. And uh, yeah, this is a basic um, this setup. Now we are we need to choose um, the virtual machine size. So this uh, in this demo, we just use the, the smallest one to avoid any cost damage. Now, so all the setup is done, but we still need uh, to um, set up any sort of um, networking issue or uh, virtual network or IP address. Whatsoever. So these are all um, default. I just uh, put it as, as a default now. So all setup is done. Then um, we are waiting for the validation and uh, see the, um, the cost uh, evaluation. And uh, once it is ready, and we can uh, create um, the virtual machine image. So once it's done, uh, we can uh, actually um, <coughs> see um, how the uh, WordPress website will be looking like. So yeah, let's have a look. So in this case, uh, we are using virtual machine image, right? So we have set up code, virtual machine, and um, networking, right? Which is huge to me, actually. So we have um, the DNS name. So we copy it and open another browser and um, and run the predefined WordPress website like this. So um, because that virtual machine has already installed the, uh, the WordPress image, yeah, we can use that like this. The problem of using the virtual machine is, um, we have, as I said, we have to set up everything by ourselves, including um, the SSL. Um, the certificate, something like that. So if we want to run our WordPress website, we need to, um, the, in a secure way, we need to enable um, the HTTPS connection, which is uh, not um, enabled by default. So we need to manually enable it. Also, we need to install the SSL certificate onto the virtual machine, which is, um, to me, is a huge, um, <coughs> huge cost, right? We, we have to spend a lot of time to and they figure that out. Now, let's move on to um, another uh, service um, the approach. We are using now um, the Azure Container Instance, which is um, about the, using the CAS approach. So in this case, as I mentioned, uh, we, need to, we don't need to uh, manage uh, the server, right? Because um, the server is already provided by um, the Azure, and we don't need to worry about the maintenance that on top of that server, we only use um, container image, which is um, WordPress has official um, the container image on Docker Hub. So we can just simply pull um, that container image onto that service. So let's have a look. So in this video, I'm going to create um, the Azure container instance. And within the container instance, I will pull out um, the WordPress image, right? So we create, 
And uh, yeah, we give it a container name, and um, we are referring the public Docker Hub image, like WordPress, the latest version of WordPress. Then we choose the resource group, then choose the location. When I take this video, um, the Australian region was not enabled. Now Australia um, has offering um, this uh, container instance, so we can uh, simply use that. Also, um, we need to give um, the DNS name, which uh, we can access from outside, as because it is a public um, the container. Now, um, so all the setup is done, and if we click OK, and it will create uh, the container <coughs> instance. So once it is ready, we will see um, how the WordPress website is uh, running. So when you click that, it goes into the um, container instance. So we put the, uh, the fully qualified domain name here. WCS um, 2018 or something like that. So because um, this is container itself is not a web server, right? We just pull the um, web uh, website in image. So uh, the FQDN is not about the website. So um, but <coughs> this um, we pull the image as um, the web server, so we can run uh, the co that container as a web um, the website. Now we use as a portal to um, create the container instance for only for single, um, but on the ISO portal only support a single container scenario. So if you want to use multi, multiple containers scenarios, then probably um, the ISO portal doesn't support that scenario. In that case, we need to use ARM template, which is um, which stands for as a resource manager template. So um, as I said, um, the WordPress, the official WordPress image doesn't support HTTPS connection by default. Right? So in this case, we have to enable um, the HTTPS connection by modifying or customizing um, the official uh, the WordPress image. Or um, you might be thinking of um, if we are if we can use um, the container, um, the, te uh, the technology, how can we use container orchestration? or scaling, something like that. Um, as a service instance, uh, as a container instance, doesn't support it. So instead, if we want to use clustering or orchestration or scaling, something like that, and think about it yeah, as a Kubernetes service. Um, I'm not covering um, this topic in here. Also, um, now we are using as an app service instance, right? so which is the platform as a service. So, as I said, it's, um, it's my favorite. And um, the reason why I like this most is um, I don't have to worry about any server maintenance. I don't have to worry about any scaling. I don't have to worry about anything but code. So I can choose either Windows or Linux box as an operating system. Actually, I run several um, the WordPress website running on Windows. So I have no problem at all so far. Also, um, this is a pass, right? So it provides, um, we can choose a runtime. So PHP 5.6 or 7 or 7.2 uh, as a default um, runtime provided. So if we want to run different version of the PHP, PHP runtime, probably this is not gonna be working. Then we can choose um, another approach. I will um, talk this later. As I said, it support auto scaling, which means if we want to scaling out using virtual machine approach, we have to install another virtual machine. We have to install another virtual machine depending on the traffic, right? If we want to use container approach, we need to install another node, another node, right? For scaling. But if we are using pass approach, actually, when the traffic um, goes in, the traffic is too heavy, it automatically scales out. When the traffic is down, it automatically scales in. So that kind of a scaling issue is um, actually I'm free from those kind of a scaling concern. Also, um, 
the SLA of um, the web uh, app service instance is 99.95%. So which means about less than 10 minutes a year of outage. So, um, but if you still want to hire availability, then think about um, the as a Kubernetes service or um, as a service fabric. Also, um, the as a pass, um, the support continuous deployment. So, it in tight, it can um, nicely integrated with your Git uh, repository or Mercurial repository, right? Which can be hosted in um, Bitbucket or GitHub or your internal um, the Git server. Yeah, it can be um, yeah, smoothly um, integrated with your the code, uh, source code repository, right? So let's have a look. Um, this is um, the, the sim uh, small video of how we can uh, deploy uh, the WordPress website to, as an app service. Now, we are giving a name onto the as a web service, and this will be the um, default name of um, the website. And we um, yeah, provide a uh, resource name, and this time, I'm going to use a Linux box. Now, we choose uh, we can choose either uh, the PHP version. So I'm going to choose um, uh, PHP 7.2 now, and yeah, just creating it. Right? So comparing to the previously, uh, we deployed on the virtual machine approach. We set up all the things, right? But in here, we don't. We just use um, the OSI. very um, the deployment approach is very simplified. Now we have a web app, but in this web app, we don't have any WordPress um, deploy, deployed yet. Now, we are integrating um, the source code repository using GitHub. And WordPress has also um, the publicly, public repository on GitHub. So we choose WordPress and <coughs> install it. So it's now it, um, it gets, um, it's, I mean, it's integrated with um, the WordPress repository now. So when you go there, and it's not deployed yet, now if we click a sync button, then uh, it pulls all the data from um, the latest code from uh, the GitHub repository and then um, deploy it, right? So if we change this repository to our own thing, right? And whenever we push the uh, commit into the GitHub, then it automatically picks that change and deploy it into um, Azure. So this is done. Then when you click on the website, and yeah, we can see how um, they quickly deploy um, the WordPress application onto um, the Azure web app. And it also has um, the, the problem, which means um, it, because it's a pass, right? Pass means um, the cloud service provider has all the um, server maintenance, which means our application has a dependency on the vendor. Right, so it's a vendor, a vendor specific dependency. So if we want to migrate our WordPress application, oops, WordPress application into different uh, cloud service provider like um, AWS, or if we want to migrate this application into our on-prem web server, we probably need to slight modification, right, because of that vendor dependency. So in order to avoid or overcome that uh, vendor dependency, probably we might need to change some packaging, right? So in this case, we can use container. So the way of um, the, the packaging is uh, just um, use the normal artifact to the container packaging. Like, um, so um, I can call it as a hybrid approach, but um, it's basically on pass, right? And um, it's using single container, so it takes benefits from has, which means we don't have to worry about server maintenance, we don't have to worry about scaling, all sorts of things. And also, we can take our benefits from CAS, which is um, container and the packaging. Now, <clears throat> let's have a look at this short video. We are creating another web app instance using uh, the single container. So this time, let's have a look. This time, yeah, we are giving it a, a different name for this web application. Then uh, there is um, the OS cho choice um, at, at the bottom. So instead of um, 
using Windows or Linux, we choose um, the Docker. Then we choose a single container. And uh, that container comes from Docker Hub, which is WordPress dot WordPress colon latest, which is of, um, the official uh, the Docker instance, uh, Docker uh, container image uh, by WordPress. So yeah, it's actually basically it. And when we set this up, and yeah, application will be deployed straight away. So it, once it is deployed, then go to the web application. It has, um, yeah, we create um, the container web application like this. And go into there. And there is um, the URL. And if we click that application, now we can see the website. Right? The problem is that this is um, the single container scenario. So if we want to if we have multiple containers for our development purpose, right? and this uh, scenario doesn't fit. In this case, we can use uh, Docker Compose as uh, for the uh, multi-container <coughs> approach. So this is another um, the hybrid scenario. So yeah, so we can use multiple containers on um, using the Docker container, right? So for example, what can we do um, as a multiple container approach? For example, um, let's think about that. Uh, if we run, a, if we are developing the themes or plugins, right? So instead of instead of um, the directly modifying the WordPress, the code base itself, we can create another container for only for themes, another container for only for plugins, right? And that then we can combine all together and host it into the web service uh, as a web app. Or for your quickly testing purpose, we can uh, simply um, the, uh, add a uh, My MySQL database like this. So I de uh, define uh, the MySQL database at the top and define a WordPress um, the container at the bottom. So we can use, uh, we can combine this kind of um, this scenario as well. But this is not secure, so it, this is only used for your testing. So, yeah. So let's have a look at this video. So as I said, um, we are still using the PaaS web, uh, as a web app instance like this. But this time, instead of we are uh, instead of using the single container approach, we are using uh, Docker Compose format. Right. So, yeah. <coughs> Choose the web application name and and choose the Docker, then instead of choosing a single container, this time we are using Docker Com Compose. Then I have predefined Docker Compose um, the YAML file and upload it. Right. Now we have all the definition uploaded like this, uh, which I showed before, and then create it. Right. So in this case, this web app has a particularly um, having uh, the Word, uh, basic WordPress website and MySQL database integrated. So don't do it for your production purpose. Now, <clears throat> so um, the web app is created now. So this time we might be um, seeing a different result because we installed um, two different um, the server at one instance. So let's have a look. So when we click um, this website, now we can see the different one because it's um, already database connection string has been provided, right? So this is uh, how we can handle multiple containers in one um, single in the web app instance. Now. There are another type of multiple container uh, scenario. We can then we can use um, the Kubernetes pod file, right? This is um, the the unlike um, the Docker Compose. We can also use Kubernetes pod. Yeah. So the basic idea is the same as um, the Docker Compose, right? It uses um, the multi-container um, support, but 
the format, file format is different. That's the only difference. Yeah, this is um, the port format. But to make sure that we are not using the full um, Kubernetes features here, we only take benefit of um, using the, uh, the port file itself. Right? So yeah, as I mentioned before, early before, if we want to fully use Kubernetes feature, I think uh, consider it as a Kubernetes service. Now, have a look at this video. So we create another web, web app for um, to use uh, the Kubernetes port file. So give it a name again. And yeah, this time we are choosing Docker. And um, in the last tab, which is Kubernetes, and provide uh, the port file. So we, I have already defined, as I showed before, the port format. And it, it defines on the WordPress image only at this stage. So we create it. So the web app is being deployed now. Once it's deployed, actually we can see um, not much differences be, uh, from the previous uh, deployment. But uh, we are using a different approach, which is, um, yeah, which it depends on your um, the business requirements. If you have already on um, the Kubernetes um, definition file, then we can use this approach. If we have a um, Docker Compose file, then we can use um, the previous approach, something like this. Right. So we can see um, <coughs> the WordPress um, has been installed using the different multi-container scenario. So um, this is not the uh, Kubernetes clustering. Right? So if we want to um, run the clustering scenario, as I said, then we can use um, the Azure Kubernetes service or, um, or Azure Service Fabric. Now, um, it's almost there. So throughout this session, I um, showed you uh, six different ways of deploying um, the WordPress website into Azure. So from the IaaS using the virtual machine approach, then um, the container instances, then the rest four is um, using the Azure Pass. And the, the rest three is a different packaging using the single container, using Docker Compose for multi-container, using the Kubernetes for, port for um, the multi-containers. Right? So the, it really depends on your business scenario. So if I am asked to um, choose the one of those um, six approach, I will definitely go to um, to, uh, one of those four and um, pass approach, depending. But um, if I stick on, if I just want to stick on Azure, I will choose the number three. But if I um, am thinking of um, the future migration, something like that, then probably I can choose um, yeah, the, the rest of the, the three hybrid approach. Right? It depends on really um, scenarios. So, or if you want more control, rather than um, giving all the control to the uh, this cloud service provider, then probably choose um, the virtual machine image uh, approach, something like this. So this is it uh, from my session. Any questions? Hi, thank you for that. Um, how do you manage uh, how do you manage the file storage and other kind of persistent data that has to hang around between mm -hmm. deployments? Because if you're using a repository-based mm -hmm. pipeline, mm -hmm. you're going to blow away mm -hmm. whatever's there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you've got to separate out mm -hmm. theme files, plug-in mm -hmm. files, mm -hmm. uploaded assets. Mm -hmm. How is that handled in several in the PaaS options? Right. Um, the, your question is about how can we can manage. Um, the, the existing contents files, something like um, the, um, the videos or images, something like that. Right? Um, the, 
like most other um, the cloud service, um, the recommended way is um, including Azure or AWS. They um, they recommend us to use a different um, the storage service. Like um, for for example, um, Azure um, use uh, Azure provide um, the storage account, the blob storage, so we can um, set up to store any images or videos directly to them. So um, there is a plugin called um, the Azure Service um, WordPress um, plugin has um, to directly use um, the storage, blob storage, instead of use, directly using the file storage into um, the, uh, the PaaS approach. So I'm pretty sure that also um, the Amazon has an um, S3 uh, bucket account, so probably we can use that. But if that file is has a kind of um, it it's a part of um, the theme or plugin, that then probably um, go with and stick with that. But other content wise, I think I would recommend uh, to use um, the blob storage. Yeah. 